Okay, so in this one we're going to look at uh, chapter 2b, number 21. Uh, now, I didn't write out all of it here. I left out part of this problem, but we'll do it together. So, in this problem, uh, some student sees these two equations here, this one and this one, and they do some steps with the equations, and uh, they end up with the answer xy equals 4 over 5, 17 over 5, which in decimal form would be about 0 0.8 comma 3, well not about, it's exactly 0 0.8 and 3.4. Okay, so that's their answer. Now we don't know what that means yet, and maybe you have a guess, but we're going to figure this out anyway. Um, so, the problem says, now I know it says that a student performed the steps at right, but there are no steps over here yet. So we're going to do that together at the end of the problem so that you can see how to actually solve this perfectly. So um, in this, let's take a look at this equation right here. We're going to graph that one, and I'm going to do that one in blue. Now, whoops, I'm going to do that. 3x plus 1. Okay, now some of you might remember this form. y equals mx plus b. And remember, that's called slope-intercept form of a line. So you can graph something that's in that form, and you get a line out of it. And in this, m stands for the slope, or the rise over the run, and b stands for the y-intercept, which is where it crosses the y-axis. So in this problem, let me go back to blue, 3 is my slope. 3, which I'm going to write it actually as 3 over 1, because then we can use rise 3, run 1. A little bit easier to think of it that way, I think. Uh, and then 1 here is my y-intercept, so that's where it crosses the y-axis. So when I graph this thing, I'm going to start. Uh, then I know I have to go up 3 for the rise and over 1 for the run. So using the slope, up 3, right there, over 1, right there, and here's that line, oops, here's that line that gets formed through those two points, something like this. Let me get rid of my little slope triangle here, and there's the line. Okay, let me shrink this down a little bit. Okay, uh, let me pick a different color and we'll graph the other one. So y equals negative 2x plus 5. So in this one, my slope is negative 2, which I'm going to write as negative 2 over 1. So again, we'll think of this as rise over run. So rise of negative 2, which is a drop of 2 and a run of 1. And then 5 here is my new y-intercept. So in this case, I'm going to start at 5 on the y-axis. So up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then the slope is negative 2 over 1, so a rise of negative 2, which really means drop 2, run 1, and I get that point. And now I can connect those two dots. And there's my other line. Now, uh, so the student graphed these two things, and they ended up with this answer right here, right? Or the fraction form of that, but basically the same thing. So what does that have to do with the graphs? Now, if you try to find out where 0 0.8, 3.4 is, 0.8 is not quite at 1. And 3.4 is a little less than halfway between 3 and 4, so about here. And if you plot out the point, you end up right about there.
And it turns out that, yeah, this is that point. So uh, end up solving for the intersection, this is what you get right here. Now let's see how the student did it, okay? Because the student didn't graph these. In fact, graphing is a way to get a good idea of where they cross, but unless you're perfect with your graphs and you end up with some nice numbers, it's usually pretty hard to guess where that's going to be. So let's look at the student's work. Okay, so the two equations here, let me rewrite those. I'm going to switch back to black. Okay, so we got y equals 3x plus 1, and y equals negative 2x plus 5. Now, if you want to find out where they cross right here, then really what you're saying is I want something on the red line and the blue line at the same time. So the x values and y values for this equation are going to be exactly the same as the x value and y value for that equation when they cross, right? So when they cross, these y's have to be the same. Well, if they're the same, then I can use substitution, right? I can say this thing is the same as that y, so I'm going to plug it in right here, right? Only when they cross. If they're not crossing, they don't have the same x's and y's, but when they do cross, they have to have the same x and y. So let me plug this in right here. So we're going to get 3x plus 1 equals negative 2x plus 5. Remember, this is a substitution step. Now when you work this out, let's, uh, let's combine like terms. So if I add 2x to both sides, I'm going to get 5x plus 1 equals 5. And then I'm going to subtract the 1 over. I'm going to get 5x equals 4. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 5. And I'm going to get x equals 4 over 5. Well, that's the same as what the student got right here. Right. Now that I have x, I should be able to get y. And remember, this is where they cross. It works in both the red line and the blue line. So I can plug it into either one, and I should get the same answer for y. So let's check. y equals 3. I'm using the first equation now. So 3x plus 1. Now x is 4 fifths plus 1. Now when I plug that in, if you remember how to do fractions with multiplying, I do 3 times 4 is 12. And then that's over 5. And plus 1. And 1 is the same as 5 over 5. So I get 12 over 5 plus 5 over 5, and that comes out to be 17 over 5. So when x is 4 over 5, y is 17 over 5. But let's double check it. Let's check the y in the other one. So negative 2x plus 5, and x is 4 fifths plus 5. So in this case, we get negative 8 over 5 plus, and then 5, I need to get a common denominator. So I'm going to do 25 over 5. And if we add those together, we do get 17 over 5 still. So when x is 4 over 5, y is 17 over 5. Okay, now this method right here where I, that I'm using to solve for the intersection is called the substitution method. Okay, because I'm taking the two y's, I'm setting them equal to each other. All right.